Good evening. This is CTV News for this Wednesday, February the 4th. I'm Sonia Shavasva. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, Governor Hogan keeps his campaign promise with plans to offer several tax relief measures in the near future. In his State of the State address this afternoon, Hogan said he plans to introduce legislation this week to repeal the so-called rain tax and automatic gas tax increases. He also plans to introduce legislation that would cut property taxes for small businesses and offer tax relief for some retirees. This week, we will start heading towards that goal by submitting legislation that repeals income taxes on pensions for retired military, police, fire, and first responders. Hogan plans to take executive action regarding what he calls a heroin epidemic in the state. He also wants to create a bipartisan commission to examine Maryland's redistricting process. Elections and having checks and balances make for a more vibrant and responsive citizen republic. To advance this discussion, I will execute an exec executive order that creates a bipartisan commission to examine Maryland's redistricting process with the goal of fully reforming this process and giving this authority to an independent bipartisan redistricting commission. And the governor will submit legislation that would strengthen Maryland's charter school law and push for tax credits for those who make voluntary contributions to private or parochial schools. Democrats say they plan to fight many of Hogan's proposals. Well, former Lieutenant Governor Michael Steele returned to the State House today, the first time since he left office back in 2007. A longtime Kettering resident, Steele says Prince George's lawmakers shouldn't worry so much about Governor Hogan's proposed budget. He's not going to continue the spending ways of the previous administration. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of uh, pain that everyone will likely feel at various points. But in the end, the longer run, and that's what you're looking for, a longer run, sustainability and growth. If we can attain that, then the cuts today, whatever they happen to be, wherever they have, happen to come from, won't matter as much as the, the growth and the progress that you'll have two, three, four years down the road. Anything in particular you'd want to say to Prince George's legislators who are concerned? Just hang in there. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. In terms of I think, coming... I think the word is relax. <laughs> and Steele also served as chair of the Republican National Committee from 2009 to 2011. Well, Maryland's cigarette tax could go up from $2 a pack to 3 if one state lawmaker has his way. Richard Maddalino, the chair of the Senate Budget and Tax Committee, is proposing to raise the tax by a dollar. Supporters of the measure say the tax would help reduce smoking, especially among children, and it would also generate an additional $100 million in revenue for the state. Now, supporters say they're confident a tax hike can pass, even though Governor Hogan has promised not to raise taxes. We know that there's some sentiment against tax increases, but tobacco taxes are different. They're a public health revenue measure that the public strongly supports, and Republican governors in three states have proposed it. So we hope the General Assembly will enact this bill and build on the progress they've made in reducing smoking and funding health care. Now, Maryland has increased the cigarette tax three times over the past decade, and the new tax proposal would also cover cigars and smokeless tobacco. Well, president of the University of Maryland College Park is speaking out about the staff furloughs and mid-year tuition increase announced Tuesday. Wallace Lowe says the actions are the result of state-mandated budget cuts ordered by outgoing Governor Martin O'Malley to balance the books for the rest of the fiscal year, which ends June 30th. For the state's flagship school, the one-time funding loss totals more than $15 million. Lowe says the university is doing the best it can to, quote, live within the diminished means. Yeah, it's, uh, it was something that we had to do because of the mid-year uh, substantial budget cut that we had under the O'Malley administration. You know, to maintain our status as a flagship university, it's not only about affordability, which we're absolutely committed to, it's also about excellence. And excellence costs money. Now, Lowe says Governor Larry Hogan's budget for fiscal year 2016 provides a 1.3 percent revenue increase for the University System of Maryland, which comes to just under $3 million more for the University of Maryland campus. 
While state funding for the Purple Line remains uncertain, President Obama's fiscal year 2016 budget, released Tuesday, includes $100 million in federal aid for the project. Supporters say the 16-mile light rail connecting Prince George's and Montgomery counties would be an economic engine for the region. But the fate of the project resides in the hands of the governor, who has called the project too expensive. Local leaders say the revenue generated by the transit system would far exceed the initial investment of $2.4 billion in federal, state, and private dollars. Advocates met t today in College Park in hopes of saving the Purple Line with the help of the business community. You know, some people think we could spend that $2 billion on other priorities in Maryland. No. No. If the Purple Line is canceled, most of that $2 billion, it's gone. It doesn't get invested in our economy. We don't get the ability to say, no, I'm going to take that $2 billion and put it into some other project. It's gone. It's a public-private partnership. You know, it's not the government alone. It's the business community with the government building this faster and creating jobs. And listen, this is not, as I said up there, it's not about the rural counties versus the suburban counties. Um, it's about creating jobs and opportunities in the state. And the best people to... And Governor Hogan has set aside an unspecified amount of money in his budget for the Purple Line, but says the project is still under review. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Sonia Srivastava.